Well, that worked. Okay. Yeah, so Riley wanted to pull that motor and that tranny out of that Lincoln. And since it was so crushed up already, and he just figured it was easier to remove the whole body off the frame so we can get that motor and tranny out of it. And uh, if you like what you just saw, go check out the actual whole video. I just sectioned a couple, like two pieces from it. There's a whole video on that Lincoln body coming off. I'll put the link down in the uh, description and probably pin it to the top comments. Seriously, if you like what you just saw, go watch the whole video. It's, uh, it's on his channel, but I'll show you how to get there. Happy Easter, everybody. <clears throat> How's everybody doing? Good. I'm doing great. This is going to be a long, weird, all-over-the-place, drawn-out episode of all kinds of bullshit. Where should I start? A lot of things happened in a specific order, and I'm not sticking to that order because I don't really want to think about in which order it happened. So, why don't we start with this box of rocks? Me and my buddy Kyle... You guys know Kyle, he's got the blue 82. We were out driving this around on Sunday last week, week before Easter. And um, we were trying to track down a clunking noise I've been having in the front of this car in the passenger side for years. And you can feel it through your feet if you're sitting in the passenger side of the car. So it only happens on hard left turns. And um, we're like, all right, let's take the car home and pull the wheel off of it and investigate. And hang on one second, I need to clean this camera lens. So we're like, all right, let's bring the car home. Let's pull the wheel off the passenger side and see what's going on under there and make sure the car is not going to fall apart mid-action. So we come down the road that way and I pull straight up my driveway where the car's sitting now, but with the front end up here. Walk into my garage to grab a lug wrench. I turn around with a floor jack and I look and I'm like, why is there a wet spot under the front of the car? It's directly where the steering box should be, but on the passenger side. I'm like, well, that's not my steering box leaking because that always leaks. Kyle goes like this. He's like, that's red. I'm like, good. That means it's training fluid. Where's it coming from? Well, it turns out that we ended up emptying the transmission on the way to the house. We didn't empty the transmission of fluid, but we almost did. <clears throat> it was pretty low. Not enough to give me any drivability issues or driving easy. So I'll show you what happened. The tranny cooling line that comes out of the radiator, this one, the metal hard line, you want to follow it to right here where there's now a rubber hose. It was rubbing against the idler arm and the frame rail and it chafed a hole in it. It chafed a microscopic pinhole in it that you could almost not even see. That's, I didn't leave a trail up the driveway or anything. <clears throat> and of course everything from that pinhole back and down was saturated in tranny fluid. So that was like 11 o'clock to 12.30 in the morning fixing this. And that was when I had to go to work the next day. Don't worry, I work night shift. So I got that fixed. Should have been all hunky-dory. I drive the car to work the next day, get to work. I'm there like four or five hours. I go out for food. And on the way back, I got a car full of Popeye's chicken. Car acts like it runs out of gas. And I'm like, well, that ain't right. What's going on? It died right on the, right on the side of the road. So I get out and I'm underneath the hood looking at stuff and I can't see anything to, you know, give me an issue. And I'm flustered at this point. I'm trying to get back to work. And uh, so I get back in the car and it fires back up like it has no issues. I make it another 200 feet down the road and it dies again permanently. I'm doing like 60 miles an hour. So I was able to coast this thing about a quarter mile up the street until I found a side road close to my job. And I ended up pulling in front of a lady's house. I didn't realize it's pitch black outside at like 11 o'clock 
I didn't realize there was a lady sitting on our porch smoking a cigarette. She's like, is everything all right? You need help? I said, I don't know. Uh, let me get back to you. So I pulled off the uh, air filter and I hit the gas and I could hear the booster squirting fuel. So I'm like, all right, it can't be a fuel problem. So what happened? Uh, sounds like I lost ignition. But it didn't feel like an ignition problem. It felt like it felt like I lost gas, but the only thing I could think of is since I can hear fuel squirting, maybe my spark disappeared, my shit died, whatever you want to call this box. I thought maybe the MSD box is having an issue. So when I got off work in the morning, me and my dad went over and tried to start in the car. Now it's a no start. Now it won't start, period. So I had the car towed home the second day it broke down, and then they abandoned it right here in the driveway. So immediately that morning, we check for spark, it's got spark. We check for fuel, it's got no fuel. So lo and behold, that crusty fuel pump down there, the diaphragm's gotta be dead or something because the first three times the car died after sitting for a minute, it would start back up and it would run fine for about 40 seconds and then it would start starving on fuel again. So right now, after this long 100 mile an hour, 10 minute rant, I'm getting ready to change this fuel pump on Easter. But that's not the best of the story. The best of the story is, how about, uh, let's just call it last month. It was March 22nd, seven in the morning. How you like it when a, a deer jumps out in front of your car and smashes your station wagon, plows that fender in, look how concave that is. Oh yeah, look at that, that is nice, gnarly. Look how creased in that is. This flare is supposed to be out here. Just for reference, look where the tire is. You go to this side. No, well, I guess that doesn't really help. But you can see the whole body line is now just crushed back here on this side. So it got that headlight bezel, got the parking light, got the fender real good. Got the door, the door didn't open. We had to pry it back with a pry bar. There's your date right there. That's when it happened. Um, it exposed that rust that I knew was starting to grow. I'm gonna have to straighten this molding bag out. Um, I have, I've had for at least a year or two now, I have a brand new, and when I say brand new, I mean brand new header panel for this car in my garage. I have a door. And I have a passenger fender. <clears throat> so all I have to track down now is the driver fender here. And it's a good thing we got Haggerty Insurance on this thing because any other insurance company is gonna be like, get lost, it's a 90 station wagon. <clears throat> now, it's a good thing I have a passenger fender here because uh, a week after the deer smashed into the car, oh, by the way, yeah, the deer that hit our car it was right at this traffic light on our way home from work. It was like 200 feet up the hill that way. Like right over there is where the deer hit the car. It ran right out and just head butted the car. It uh, didn't sound like we hit a deer. We've hit deer before. It sounded like we hit another car. It sounded like we hit metal. It was a big doe. And um, it, uh, it, uh, it, it didn't even get up and run away. Like this thing was done cold right on the side of the road. I mean, it took 20 minutes to die but it didn't move an inch. And uh, it sounded like metal, man. It didn't sound like we hit bones wrapped in fur. After 20 minutes of it squirming in the road, somebody, uh, our neighbor dragged it off the road. Now that being said, now that the deer incident's done, how about a week later, there's a KFC building up the street with a driveway wider, an entrance to their driveway wider than that staircase to that bush right there. Big wide driveway off the main road. Well, I guess this guy in whatever he was driving couldn't figure out how to make the turn into that big wide driveway that nobody was coming in and out of. So the Silverado in front of my dad slams on the brakes. My dad slams on the brakes. And my dad plows into the back of a Silverado. All within a week. Week one, dear, week two, dad plows a Silverado. Now, it doesn't look half as bad as it did because uh, this headlight bezel 
is a spare I had laying around. We put this on. The header panel actually broke off right here. And broke right there. And then the whole header panel was missing on this side. The headlights were hanging, both of them, the high and the low. The fender looks bad, but the fender was much worse. It was pushed back a lot more. Dad took a ratchet strap from the bumper to the fender and then pulled it back this way and pushed it in. And uh, he used screws to put the header panel back on. And then he had the screws under here with the headlight bezel. So that looks 110% better than it did. But that looked worse than the driver's side from the deer about a week ago, the night that it happened. Um, I came home from the bar with Riley. My dad's like, well, we're going to have to use that header panel. And I'm like, why? He's like, I had an accident. The way he said it, I thought he was going to try and claim the header panel on the insurance because of the fender. I'm like, all right, funny, dickhead, what happened? He's like, no, I hit somebody. I'm like, what? Oh, you got to be shitting me. And I walked up to the car in the dark, and I saw the damage, and I was like... Uh, uh, I, I was speechless. I just walked away. I was like, I don't want to know about it. You know what? I'm done. Too much shit's been going on. So it's a good thing I got a fender, a header panel, a door, and I need to get this fender. You could tell it was such a light love tap when he hit the Silverado. He didn't do any damage to the truck at all, but it didn't even, it didn't buckle the hood or anything. You know what I mean? It didn't even make bumper contact. It just, it just tapped the header panel and broke it off and then push the fender back. So that happened. It uh, sounds like a long rant, don't it? Happy Easter. There's, uh, there's some other stuff going on. I'm gonna pick the camera up in a little bit, but let me get that fuel pump changed before the sun goes down, because it's already 5.30. I work night shift and I got off at six this morning and didn't get home to 7.30, so. Oh, also. I got an inner fender well from the junkyard for the wagon also because this is all bent too. You can see this is all crushed into here on the car. So when you drive the car down the street, you can see where the fender is making contact to the tread of the tire. If the car goes through dips or anything like, like that, you can hear the fender make contact to the tire. You know how, you know how life works. So hopefully you guys find this as entertaining as I do at this point. Let me go ahead and get this piece of shit fixed. There's the old pump. All right, so there's the old pump. I got that off. And what I was trying to explain on camera earlier was when I was driving the car, absolutely felt like fuel starvation like i ran the car out of gas i say that because i've already run this car out of gas two months ago when i had shop replace those fuel lines right there they got the car with i want to say more than a quarter tank of gas and between a quarter and a half a tank when i got the car back it was on e and i made it less than a mile from their shop and it ran out of gas so I know exactly how it feels in this car in particular when it runs out of gas that's what I was feeling when I got stuck on the side of the road and when I pulled the air filter and I was looking at the carb when I bumped the gas pedal I could hear fuel spritzing and but I didn't see I had my light down the throat and I couldn't see the boosters shooting fuel i told my dad that he's like well if you heard it it's probably not fuel i'm like i still think it's fuel but he's got it so he set in his head that he hates these msd boxes that he's like oh it's that box i'm telling you no ignition it'll act the same way that box took a shit blah 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 so i got into my head well he maybe he's right maybe the box is no good but lo and behold like i said we checked for spark when i got home and it had it was fine plenty of spark just didn't want to start and then um it would start up on ether though and that that was the uh that's what sealed the deal fuel pump so all right let's get this turd back on well not that turd new turd we'll put the new turd on that turd and maybe we'll have a turd gen on the road again
Okay, so we talked about that being broken for the 80th time in two months. That getting smashed two times in one week. Uh, other stuff that went wrong. And, um, but wait, there's more. Oh, for like the past, for about a month, my dad's been going on about how the deck is separating from the house. And it's starting to lean that way towards the backyard. And he's like, we got to brace it or something from the backyard. So it doesn't collapse. It's starting to lean this way and it's separating from the house. And you can see where it's binding right, well, where it's coming apart because of stress. Right there. You can see the nails. We tried beating that back with a hammer. So I'm like, okay, great, dex has got an issue. We, I guess we can push it back, whatever. But I didn't actually look at it. When I did come out and look at it the other day, I saw what the problem is immediately. It's a way bigger problem than just pushing the deck back. There's a problem right there. I saw it in two seconds. I said, oh, there's your problem right there. Look, the retaining wall is falling. The stupid retaining wall is falling that way. This is why you don't build houses into hills. You don't dig out earth to slap half a basement underground and half a basement above ground. Stupidest thing ever. They started doing that in the 60s with bi-level homes. You don't do that. So anyway, retaining wall's falling. It's starting to crack. So I gotta talk to Zach's dad and a couple other people that do shit like this and I need to figure out how to, you know, fix this before the wall comes down, takes the deck, takes my car out, which honestly I'd get a payout if the deck landed on the car. But if the deck collapsed and the wall came down, it's also fastened to the house. It's gonna take part of the house with it and cause damage where, you know, rainwater is gonna get in and swell the ground and it's just gonna cause long-term issues. So that needs to be tackled pretty soon oh so that's gonna wrap this episode up <clears throat> hopefully you're having a better time than I am and uh, I don't know what's worse all the stuff breaking around here or what hasn't broken yet that's gonna break soon that the universe knows about, but I don't know is coming yet. Oh, so like I said earlier, <laughs> go check out at the bottom of my channel in the comment section. I'll pin it, the link. Go check out the video on Riley's channel of them taking that link apart. But man, that's an awesome video. I wasn't there. I wish I was. I was stuck at work that day. It looked fun as shit. So, all right, I'll see you guys later. And uh, next time something breaks around here, you'll know about it. <laughs> Smile. <laughs> We're all here at the fucking table. Our face is Let's all point and laugh. <laughs> point and laugh back at <laughs> Ha 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 ha